Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, by the time you're seeing this video, we are getting our specials, our champions ready for the greatest poodle show on earth, Poodle Club of America. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of insight to some of the stuff that I probably have with me. I've packed, you should have packed. You can pack for Westminster or pack for Poodle Club of America next year, whatever works for you. So let's get down to what are we using on our poodles. So um, of course we have to start out with a clean poodle, right? So to that end, we're going to bath our poodle. So typically I would bath my poodle in something like Clean Start, like some kind of clarifying shampoo to start off with that like super clean start. I would probably, for Poodle Club of America, I've used Thick and Thicker shampoo because I want just as much volume in that poodle's coat as possible. Now, whether I've used a conditioner or simply just use something like After You Bathe, I am not going to use it all over my entire dog like I would for most maintenance bathing. What I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna use it on that very, very longest hair. So top knot and ears. And the way I use it for PCA or for really important poodle shows is a little bit different. I like to just put it in my hands, emulsify it in my hands and just wipe it through the ends of the top knot, maybe the ends of the neck hair and through the ear from the top of the ear to the bottom, leaving a little bit more in the ends. And the reason I do that is I just want a little bit of conditioning properties for the spray up. I want the ears to have like a little bit of weight so that they, you know, are floofy and fluffy and like look fantastic in the ring. But I, I don't want to take a chance that conditioner got to the root of the hair at any part of my poodle for something as important as Poodle Club of America. So, you know, once my dog is bathed and dried, probably I'm gonna clip it. So, you know, you've seen tons of videos where I'm using a five in one uh, cl clipper blade, right? And they're fantastic, right? But for a show as important as Poodle Club of America, I wanna use a true 40 blade, you know, the detachable A5 blade on my poodle because it just does a better job. And remember, our poodles never ever look better than they do at Poodle Club of America. So I'm gonna use a true 40 blade, you know, this is like the Artemis Clipper by Chris Christensen and it has like that A5 detachable tight blade um, that goes on it. So just, you know, Yes, I love a five-in-one clipper, but Poodle Club of America, really important shows. I'm always using a true 40 on a true clipper. So, so I have my dog bathed, I have them dried, I've clipped them. What are some of the other things I do as I get ready for PCA and why did I bring certain things? Obviously now it's time to line brush and comb, right? The blow dry does not include line brushing and combing. We have a ton of tutorials about how I feel one of the most important parts of your groom is the actual comb out. So for my comb out, my brush out, I am going to use a slicker brush for all the shortest hair. So the bracelets, the undercarriage, the chest, maybe up to the spray line. Remember, I never ever use a slicker brush on the tail or the ears of any breed. And I also don't use them on the top knot or neck hair of a poodle. Um, here I have the carbon slicker, a little bit more about this in one of our other tutorials and why um, I love this brush and actually had a little bit of input into the design of it. I'm also going to use a pin brush with about a 27 millimeter pin in it. Um, I like, you know, one with kind of a bit of a medium to soft feel to the pad. Um, any pin brush that has a bent or broken pin in my house gets thrown out or used uh, to clean the carpet, right? Because as soon as they have a bent or broken pin, they're gonna start pulling hair out. So I'm gonna make sure that my comb out is top notch. So when I'm doing the comb out, remember that you're never ever brushing with a dry coat. You're always using a brushing spray. More on that in one of our other tutorials. And we want to use a super fine tooth comb for the comb out. Yes, we might use a poodle comb for spraying up, but for the comb out, we are going to use something really, really fine to make sure the comb out looks absolutely perfect. So now we have our poodle bathed and dried. We have it clipped. We have it brushed and combed out. Now maybe we're getting down to some of the more cosmetic things that we do to the poodles to get them in the ring. So for that, what do we need? Maybe I'm gonna blow out the ears and then use a little bit of vet wrap in the ear to keep it, you know, out of the top, not neat and tidy. Um, 
and just out of my way. So vet wrap is super useful. Clearly I'm gonna need a parting comb to part the hair for the ears, for my top knot. I'm gonna need some bands, um, except for toy poodles, I like to use uh, wrapping size bands. Um, I love these little containers because you can literally drop them on the floor and nothing happens, your bands don't go anywhere. Uh, your dog might need a little bit of help with some extra hair. Um, you know, this doesn't change the quality of my dog, just makes it look a little bit prettier. Um, then it might be time to spray up. So thick and thicker, aerosol spray. This isn't a hair spray, but if I have a really, really thin coated poodle, I might use this um, for the brush out. I might use it as an extra base layer before spraying up. Um, I'm definitely gonna use it in the hawks, in the bracelets, in maybe in the ears to give that super full effect. So this is a really good like little extra thing to have around. Um, I like to always have at least two different hairsprays, and I don't mean two different cans, I mean two different um, brands, styles, formulas, because it can be really dry in the building if the air conditioning is turned up. It can be really humid if there's lots of um, thunderstorms outside, which can happen in that St. Louis area. So I like to have um, like kind of a hairspray that's a little bit stickier and one that's a little bit drier because no matter what the weather's doing, I always have options as well. I want those cans to be full, right? That half can, that three quarter can, even that nine tenths can, you are not starting to spray your poodle up with that. At Poodle Club of America, uh-uh-uh. You need a full can with lots of butane, lots of product in it that really Get so sky high top knots. Here are two of my faves, Chris Christensen Super Hold, Kenra. If you're buying Kenra, um, it is a human product. You're gonna buy formula 25 or higher. It goes up to 31, I believe. Um, so 25 or higher is what you need. So now I have my poodle sprayed up. Um, you know, maybe using different hairsprays or something, I might wanna use a little bit of black ice spray to just make sure the spray up looks absolutely perfect. Um, maybe I've used some Showtech texturizing crystals. Um, more on this later of how they can like build in a bubble to make that bubble hair a little bit thicker, how they're great for puppies. You can use them on tails, you can use them in hawks. Really, really great product here. I might do highlights, low lights on my dog's faces with a Chris stick, a little bit of makeup. It goes a long way to making things look fabulous. So when I'm spraying up, not only am I using hairspray, I'm probably gonna be using a poodle comb. Um, another thing that you could be using is a Chris Christensen competition comb. This is a nine and a half inch comb has a wide end and a narrow end, but it also has these really great markings on it that allow you um, to see how tall your top knot is. Is it looking balanced from side to side, right? Uh, do your hawks look perfect, right? Are your bracelets the exact same size? Super easy to figure that out with the Chris Christensen competition comb. I recommend you getting one of these. And so now we are spraying up. I also like to have a separate spray up brush. For me, I'm gonna use one with a the longest pin I can get. So this is the Chris Christensen, um, it's a 35 millimeter pin. Um, Madden also makes a great one, it's gray, that has the longest pin, that's also a great spray up brush. But I want a separate spray up brush, so not only do I want that longer pin, because I don't want my arm getting in the way, um, or the, the tines of the brush getting in the way, right? I, so you're only using the tip of it. This just does, the longer pin just does a better job. So I'm gonna have the shorter pin for brushing out, the longer pin for spraying up. Typically, I'm gonna mark them, one's hairspray, one's not. Um, I've been told that I used to write Allison's don't ever use this on the back of my brush, but that's a whole other story. So you do want that separate brush that's only used for spraying up. So some of the other things that can help you spraying up is to have a top knot pillow for your dog to rest their chin in. This makes it super comfy for them. Has different sizes, right? Like of how high or low the head can be based on what uh, side of the brush that you use. So, you know, these are kind of all of the things that I might be using while I am um, getting my poodle ready. 
Um, one of the other things I might use is a symmetry mat. And again, the symmetry mat is a mat with a grid on it. The symmetry mat just simply has a grid on it. The symmetry mat with the competition comb um, just makes making sure that your trims look absolutely perfect and are the same size, shape, etc., from every angle super, super easily. So that's something else that I like to use. Um, at the end of the day, obviously, I'm gonna go wash my poodle, take all the hairspray out, and then I'm gonna band them and probably wrap them, right? Making sure I'm protecting their hair, so having wrappers is great. Um, a couple other things that I would be remiss to say that I forgot so far is shears, right? Obviously, you're gonna have your very best shears sharpened, all ready to go. You're using your finishing shear um, at PCA because you've done all your grunt work, all your pre-trimming at home. So making sure that you have a straight. I really love, you know, a super curve. Um, these are fantastic as well to get all the angles that you might need. And one of my favorite finishing touches on a white poodle to really enhance pigment, on a black poodle to just make that coat look like velvet um, and to really bring out all the highlights in the face is Shine for sure. It smells fantastic and just makes everything look absolutely the best it can. I mean, I just love like giving a little mist of shine for sure and just wiping my hand on a poodle and just like making it look like velvet. It just seems so satisfying to me. Um, so yeah, I mean, this isn't even an exhaustive list, right? Like this is kind of like what you need at PCA. One of the things I enjoy about going to PCA is like watching people and like learning different tips and tricks. Some of them that I knew, I just kind of forgot that I knew that. And other ones that, um, yeah, are brand new to me. And also seeing different products, see how different people use different products, um, see what is new out there in the world. So uh, the next time you're going to a really important poodle event, um, Westminster, whatever it might be, I invite you to just take a look at all of the things that you might need to bring with you. So happy poodle out there, people. And if you're watching this today at PCA, um, I hope you come over and say hi, and I hope you enjoy today to the maximum. So as this is the last Friday of the month, and you know, if you might be watching this at PCA on specials day, um, you know, I invite you to come over and say hi, ask me about products, ask me about training, grooming your poodle, whatever it may be, but just like coming over and saying hi and maybe getting a little bit of Poodle University or Leading Edge Dog Show Academy swag, I would love for you to do that. Um, also, if you're watching this after PCA, like come and see me at Westminster too. We can do the same thing, right? Would love to see you. Would love to hear your pain point, what you've learned from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. But most of all, I want to say this is the last Friday of the month. It's been Poodle Month. We have had such a fantastic month with all of you just interacting, doing your critique, sharing your photos, sharing what we have learned. Um, I'm so, so proud of so many of our students out there. So from all of us at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy to everybody out there, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing Poodle Month and I'll see you next year at PCA. Love ya, bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought. And as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium and subscription content and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.